Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be week 17 of the Automotive Weekly Waveforms. We're gonna take a slight break from the pressure transducers and pull sensors, because um, I know that not everyone has those and you may not do that type of testing. So we're gonna go back to some voltage style testing and today we're gonna be testing a mass airflow sensor. Now, most of the time I don't grab the scope when I'm checking mass airflows. I normally look at the scanner data because if we scope the mass airflow sensor, we're not gonna get results that are grams per second. And that's what the computer's gonna show us. The computer's gonna translate the mass airflow signal into grams per second for us, and that's what most of our reference material is gonna show us. But how does it get that information? Well, most mass airflow sensors are a hot wire mass airflow sensor, so they have a a little wire or resistor in there that they heat up um, typically like 200 degrees Fahrenheit over ambient air temperature. Um, so around 100 Celsius over ambient temperature. And they do that because as the airflow goes by that, it's going to try to cool it off. Well, in order to keep it that temperature, they have to increase the voltage going to it. They don't wanna increase the current. The current's gonna be constant, but the voltage will change. And that's where we're gonna get our measurement from. Our voltage is going to vary. If we had a microamp clamp, we could put it on there and our current would probably remain the same. So even as that mass airflow sensor is sitting there with the engine off, it's going to be dissipating some of that heat. Um, just the air around that element is going to be changing it. So the computer is responsible for you know, performing that calculation of knowing when we turn the key on, um, we're gonna have a little bit of you know, voltage on that wire. Once we're up and running, now we're gonna calculate our grams per second. So we are just going to be doing a voltage check on the mass airflow sensor. Um, this is a Toyota sensor. It's mounted on top of the air intake box, easy to get to. Most manufacturers are easy to get to. We're gonna cover the GM um, frequency style mass airflow sensors in another episode. Um, so this is just going to be the voltage style mass airflow sensors. Now, a lot of the modern vehicles also have a intake air temp sensor built into that mass airflow sensor. So that way the computer can have everything in one location. Um, one sensor does the roles of several different things. Some of the newer vehicles are also including a um, pressure sensor into that as well. And those ones operate a little bit differently. But this test will cover probably 70% or more of the mass airflow sensors that are out there. Now for this vehicle, I'm just gonna jump into the component the, the guided component test, um, because I don't know which wire is which, and I'm at home today, so I don't feel like going inside to look it up. This is a 2007 Toyota Highlander hybrid, 3.3. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to engine, we're gonna scroll down here to mass airflow sensor, DC voltage test. Now, this is gonna give us some information about the vehicle and how the sensor is gonna operate. During cranking, voltage should be about 1.3 to 1.6. We're gonna have more airflow when we're cranking the engine over than when we're actually sitting at idle on most vehicles. <clears throat> as air volume increases, mass airflow voltage increases as well. So at warm idle, we should be 0.7 to 1.7. So that's a pretty broad range. Um, that's why we normally use the grams per second built into the, uh, the scanner data. And then we get a pin out of the vehicle as well, or that sensor. Um, so back probing, one, two, three, four, five. The sensor is pretty accessible. And I need to be on the We need to be grounded, and then we're gonna to go to the MAF positive signal. And then we also have a mass airflow negative signal. We have an ignition positive and an ECM negative, and then our intake air temp sensor. So we'll click on view meter. I'll plug the uh, scope leads in here. Okay, now I don't see any activity. Um, the zero line's actually all the way at the bottom. I bring that up a little bit, we can see that we're sitting at zero volts. Um, I'm gonna turn the key to the on position, but not ready mode or not engine running mode since it's a hybrid. And we'll see what that voltage jumps up to with the engine off, and then we will fire it up. Now, being that this is a hybrid, it's going to have a fast idle. 
um, especially being cold. So our grams per our our voltage may be quite higher than what we expect. So because these hybrids typically idle a little bit faster, our voltage might be higher than we expect. So here we had a big jump as it's trying to warm up that wire. Now that the wire is warmed up, we are hovering just above a half a volt. Um, if we maximized our screen here, we can see a live reading of 0.65 volts. Let me go ahead and start it up. And I turned on the air conditioning just so it would stay running for a while. And we can see that we are almost two volts here. Um, our live voltage is actually at two volts. So, you know, we're above what the, uh, what the guided component test said, but we're not at a warm idle either. We're kind of a, a cold, fast idle. So that's pretty much it. If I was getting a, no reading at all in the scan tool, no grams per second, then I would probably want to take a look at the, uh, the mass airflow signal, make sure I'm getting a signal on that wire. Now, if I wasn't getting a signal on this wire, then I would probably want to check some of the other signals coming off that sensor. We could check our ECM power and ground um, just to make sure that we have everything we need in order for that sensor to operate. Now, Toyota doesn't typically have an issue with uh, loose connections and wiring stuff, um, but if it's a, a Nissan or a Volkswagen, then you may run into some uh, you know, poor terminal tension um, you have to replace that connector or tighten it up. So while we have, you know, the scope running with this on the screen, it looks like the idles come down a little bit. Now we're sitting at 1.5. Um, if we were looking at this and we wanted to add a second channel, now we're in the guided component test meter. We're not in the regular lab scope, but the operation is very similar. Uh, we can just add a second channel and I'm gonna change our voltage, not on that one, to 20 volts. And we don't need peak or filter on. And I'm gonna to check to see what our voltage is on that wire that was labeled as our ignition positive. Because maybe, maybe we don't have power going to this uh, sensor. If we didn't have power going to it, we probably would have a zero volt reading. Um, which may cause a mass airflow signal low or short to ground um, fault code. I'm gonna minimize this again so that I can see which one is our positive. So pin number one should be our 12 volt positive wire. And there we go, we have a signal there and we are sitting at 13.75 volts. Um, now this doesn't have an alternator, it has a DC to DC converter because it's a hybrid. Um, so it'll remain pretty constant regardless of engine RPM. So if we uh, jumped in here and we saw that, okay, yeah, our voltage is good here, but I still don't have a signal, what could be going on? We would probably want to check our ground circuit. Now, since this would be like a voltage drop test on our ground, we really want to be down here at like one to two volts because um, we don't want any voltage on this ground wire. And the ground wire was all the way at the other end on pin number five. And I think I saw a little bit of noise there. Oh, I knocked my other pin loose. Let me bring channel two up a little bit. So I am seeing a little bit of ripple. That is, you know, telling me that I have a connection. I'm just gonna unplug my, uh, my test lead and I get more of a flat line. Plug it back in, I get a little bit of noise. Um, since we know we don't have over two volts, we can now drop down to say 200 millivolts. And there we can see our noise floor on that wire, but we don't have an excessive amount of voltage drop. So our, our ground is good. Um, now we could, we could jump back up, you know, to test another circuit. Now I'm gonna go to five volt scale and I'm gonna check the intake air temp sensor circuit just to make sure I have a signal on it, which is gonna be pin number four. And we're sitting around two volts. My ambient air temp right now is probably in the mid 50s. Um, so I would have to go to the guided component test for the intake air temp sensor to see if that kind of correlates with um, the correct voltage that I, or the voltage that I have. Let's go ahead and go back. Let's just jump into the 
intake air temp just to see uh, if I'm at the right voltage. So it says I should be about two volts at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I don't see a chart, so I think we are around two volts and it's possible that it's pulling in air that is around that temperature um, just because the sun has been heating up the air box a little bit. Now it's not something I can do on this hybrid vehicle because they don't give you a whole lot of throttle response. Um, but on a normal, normal vehicle where you can snap the throttle, what you would see if we were scoped on that line, which I could probably do it on my 4Runner, um, it's easy to access the mass airflow on that one as well. When you snap the throttle, you're gonna see a very, very large jump in the mass airflow sensor voltage or frequency if we're doing a frequency style mass airflow. Because when you open up that throttle body, even though the engine's not pulling in a lot of air right now, you're filling the void. The intake's under vacuum um, or a low pressure system. When we snap that throttle, a big rush of air jumps in there and wants to fill that space. So we're gonna see a big rise and then it's gonna drop back down and then it's gonna slowly taper up you know, as we, uh, as we ra race the engine higher and higher. Um, if we were driving the vehicle while doing that and looking at the mass airflow sensor data, we would, uh, grams per second, we'd romp on it, we would see a big jump, drop down, and it would slowly ramp it back up from there. So this is a fairly simple test. Um, there's not a whole lot of you know, known good references for mass airflow sensors out there. It's not something that most people test. They typically go to the scanner data, but what happens when you're not getting a signal that you expected? Um, most people are gonna take the mass airflow out, look at it, see if it's clean. If it's not, if it is clean, they're gonna replace it. If it's not clean, they're gonna clean it and try it again. Um, but if that doesn't fix it, fix it then they're gonna be kind of stumped. So if you do a couple of basic checks, make sure that we have power, make sure that we have ground, make sure that we have a signal coming out of it, um, then it might save you from throwing parts at a vehicle. If you have any questions or comments, put those down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.